now we have a simple structure of the play page in place and we can click on alt and collapse to collapse the whole level so now we can see the structure and we can make the plan so we will create css grid on the body element let's do that here we open the grid editor and we say create css grid by default the grid items are automatically placed in grid so like our grid has three cells defined by uh, these lines and so the header element goes into the first area and then the main goes into the second the sidebar goes into the third and then what to do with the fourth one and in case that there are more elements than areas defined in grid the browser will automatically create new rows in order to fit in all the available content so here we can see that for the footer we it went into the second row so the browser created the second row for us but we can do that uh, ourselves so that we can control it so let's do that so now we have the second row is here but in most cases this default layout is not what we want uh, although i have to admit this one looks kind of modern and and spacey i like it so we could leave it like that or we can go and place the elements according to our um, wish so let's do that um, and first we have to create like the the grid the structure that we need for our purpose so in this case we can try at the beginning to have the header in the first row and then have the main here and sidebar in this area and that means we need another row for the footer so now we can go ahead and position elements so we click on the header not on the h1 inside the header but on the actual header element and then notice that uh, these resize handles appeared and these handles help us to place the element so let's just drag this and place it here so now the element is not anymore automatically placed but explicitly placed and we can see this the, here in the CSS code the header element got the grid area declaration that means that the element is positioned starting from the first horizontal line from the first row line and from the first column line and ends at the second row line and at the fourth column line so we can see like if we hover here we can also see the position in the grid so these are the lines and elements are placed with the lines so that's one way of placing elements telling the browser like start at this line and end at this line for both uh, columns and rows um, okay let's do the main so now you see i selected the paragraph and we cannot place it because we can only place the immediate children of the grid element so that's body in our case so we have to select the main element and now we can again drag it and we see it starts here from the first um, column line to the third and from the second row line until the third and here you probably are wondering wow but what's happening uh, like the content goes outside 
Um, and the reason for that is that our grid sizes specify that the rows are 100 pixels high. So they cannot accommodate the whole content and the content overflows uh, the grid areas. Um, but don't worry, we will solve this soon. Let's just position all the elements first. So this one, the sidebar is already in a good place, but let's just nudge it a bit so that we kind of hard code this uh, coordinates and uh, place the element explicitly. And then the footer will just span the whole width of the third row. So now the elements are placed but we need to adjust the, the row sizes to accommodate the content. And in many cases, like when we define the grid, we don't really know how big the content that will be in that area will be. So luckily, CSS grid lets us uh, use the auto size, and that means that the size of the row will match the size of the content. So look now, if we do that in the second row, now the second row is big enough to fit all the content of our main section. And we do the same in the footer. And now also the, the third row kind of uh, shrank because we just have one paragraph of text there. Let's add a bit of gap between the elements, 40 pixels. And now let's take a look at the column sizes, if that's okay, so we can hide the user interface so that we have more place. And let's check what happens when we resize the page. Because we are using fraction units, that means that the whole available width will be um, divided according to these units. We'll take a look at the fraction units later, but for now let's, let's take a look at one of their main benefits. So like here we have our sidebar in this area, in this column, and we don't really want to have the sidebar expand or shrink according to the page size. It's kind of usually fixed content. So let's say that it's 200 pixels uh, wide. And then what will happen? You see, this the sidebar area stays the same, 200 pixels this column, while this area, the content area, will expand and shrink. We can also switch off the display helpers so that we can easier see the page. I'm quite happy with our layout and it was also easy to do. And that's the magic part of the CSS grid. Uh, but we are not finished yet. We can uh, make this layout even better. We can position elements in a smarter way and we can optimize the grid and we can also improve how it looks.